back behind him off because it's right in his face. Recently, I read an article in Fast Company, Company Magazine on the Ooh. habits of optimistic people. Probably all of us have heard the claim that optimistic people see the glass as half full rather than half empty. <laughs> but did you know optimistic people also make more money than pessimistic people and enjoy health benefits such as fewer colds, a reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, and a longer life. You know, children are born optimists, and over the course of time, life happens. You know, I think the most delightful children are three and four year olds, if, you, if you'll think about children that age. They're over the terrible twos. Mm -hmm. They haven't gone to kindergarten or, you know, school where they're uh, influenced by by the world, I guess you could say. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. But but three and four year old children, I just I just I love to watch them in the you know at the grocery store because they just seem so positive and, and excited about everything. But just as with children, circumstances change and cynicism often sets in as we grow and as we get older. But you know, deep down, most of us want to get back to the optimism of our early childhood. We all tend to seek that silver lining that we hope is there, that we have faith that it's there. Studies have shown that, that optimistic people, uh, or that some people are naturally optimistic, whereas some people are naturally pessimistic. And we talked about this a little bit in RE this morning. I believe, however, that somebody who is negative or pessimistic can control it and can improve upon it. Optimism isn't a pie-in-the-sky ideal. It's not closing your eyes and being in the clouds. People often say they're a realist, and I, I, I say that all the time, but reality alone may prevent us from getting past first base. Like any healthy habit, optimism is something you need to practice every day. If you haven't tried optimism, optimism, I'd like to share with you seven traits optimists exhibit and the habits you can implement to become one too. Habit number one, optimists express gratitude. Being appreciative of big blessings isn't enough Optimists are even grateful for the smallest things in life. The sun coming up in the morning, your child or dog excited to see you, being thankful about the littlest things makes the bigger things that much better. Optimism also, optimists also find good in hardships, obstacles, and failures because these are the situations that give us strength and resilience. When optimists stumble across problems, it doesn't seem as bad because they've learned to always find that silver lining. One time when my children were little, my wife and I were feeling down about some things, so I suggested we compile a list of all the things we had going for us. By the time we'd finished, we had quite a long list of things to be happy about. I read that if you have food in your fridge, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and a place to sleep, you are better off than 75% of the world. If you have money in the bank, in your wallet, and some spare change in your pocket, you are among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you are more blessed than the million people who will not survive this week. If you have never experienced the danger, danger of battle, the agony of imprisonment or torture, or the horrible pangs of starvation, you are luckier than 500 million people 
alive today who are suffering. If you can hear this message this morning, you are more fortunate than 70 million people in the world who cannot hear it all. Habit number two, optimistic people donate their time and energy. The curse said dry mouth. <laughs> Whether it's helping at the local homeless shelter, soup kitchen, or being available to people you know, giving back is a habit optimistic people practice. This helps you feel grateful for what you have. It's a good place to start if you want to become more optimistic. No matter what you're going through, it helps to be good to others and help whenever and wherever you can. The spirit of altruism can make you feel optimistic about your own life. There must be some force in the world that makes us forget on a regular basis just how good most of us have it. It's when we break out of our safety bubble, when we are willing to stretch ourselves beyond our personal comfort zone, that we are able to see just how comfortable and safe we are. None of us here would tolerate being in a situation where there was more than a remote possibility that we would suffer or be without those things that make our lives easy, compared to those less fortunate folks who are homeless or unemployed. By giving and sharing our financial resources and even our time with those in need helps us appreciate the many blessings we enjoy on a daily basis. Habit number three. Optimistic people are interested in others. When people hear the stories of how others persevere, it fosters optimism. People often think they're alone in their struggles. When they wrestle with divorce, serious illness, or financial problems, <laughs> When they hear about people who've experienced the same things and came out on the sunny side, it can give them hope, and hope is the foundation of optimism. This is something everyone can do on a daily basis. There are so many amazing stories about optimistic people who overcome incredible odds. Some very well-known people whose names we all recognize overcame tremendous odds to become successful people. People like Oprah Winfrey, who bore and lost a child when she was just 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Maya Angelou, who overcame sexual abuse, poverty, and racial discrimination to become a renowned published author and poet. Bill Gates, one of the richest people in the world, endured the failure of his first business venture. Thomas Edison failed a thousand times when he, before he discovered a way to build a light bulb that could be commercially, commercially useful to millions of people. That's a lot of failure, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A thousand times. Mm -hmm. Benjamin Franklin had to leave school at age 10 because his parents could not afford his tuition, but became one of the greatest statesmen and innovators. Most would say one of the greatest presidents of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt, became partially paralyzed at the age of 39, yet was elected to the highest office in the land four times. True for many of us, the odds are stacked against us. We're beaten down, and time again, time and time again, but when we learn to take a healthy interest in other people, often the tide changes and we experience success when and where we least expect it. Habit number four. Optimists surround themselves with upbeat people. You are the sum of the people you spend time with. If you are always with pessimists, every time you hang out with them, it can be draining. If you're with optimists, however, it's easy to absorb that energy, and it can be powerful. I think we all experience that here on Sunday mornings. I do. Mm -hmm. 
Olympus, I'm sorry, Olympic gymnast Mary Lou Retton coined the phrase, optimism is a happiness magnet. It's true, when you're around people who are positive and upbeat, it raises you up. We all know Debbie Downers and Sorrowful Sams, who never seem to have anything positive to say. They always point out problems, but rarely come up with solutions. You know people like this. In fact, you probably work with folks who are this way, at least one or two. One of the sisters I know who works at Brescia University is just the opposite. She's always cheerful, always has a smile on her face, and always has something positive to say. And she's one of the most popular instructors at Brescia. People like that are the kind of people we all enjoy being around. They can make us feel better even when we may be having a terrible day. If you are so unfortunate to be regularly surrounded with negative people, at least listen to upbeat music, which lifts your spirit. I heard a CD of Klitzmer music, the music that our Jewish friends dance to at weddings and other celebrations, and there's no way I can be down after listening to that upbeat rhythm. Habit number five, optimistic people don't listen to naysayers. What other people do or say is a reflection of their own reality, not yours. Optimistic people don't take the opinions of others too seriously when they don't agree. This means not listening to the naysayers who will tell you that you can't achieve your goals. You can disagree with others' opinions. That's the beauty of life. But don't look at it in any other way and don't let it affect you. It's their reality, not yours. I think of people like Winston Churchill, one of Britain's greatest leaders, when Nazi bombs were destroying the city of London during World War II. He remained incredibly optimistic and refused to entertain the idea that Britain would not win the war with Germany. Most of us have heard the famous quote from one of his wartime speeches, we shall defend our island Whatever the cost may be, we shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. And of course, we know Britain didn't fall to the Nazis. Habit number six, optimists forgive others. While this can be easier said than done, Optimists have an extraordinary ability to forgive. We humans so often spend far too much time and energy fighting and not trusting one another because we do not know or believe that we're loved. That takes faith and a certain amount of trust. The easiest way to forgive is to reflect on the fact that the past is the past and recognizing that it's only human to make mistakes. We should make peace with the past so that it doesn't spoil the present. And finally, habit number seven, optimistic people smile. Our 16th president and fellow Kentuckian, Abraham Lincoln, said, people are just as happy as they make up their minds to be. Often when we are unhappy, it's because it's just so much easier to be gloomy and miserable than it is to smile and be pleasant. One question we might ask ourselves on a regular basis is, am I a manifestation of love to everyone I encounter today, or am I a part of the universal unhappiness that plagues the world? Smiling creates a happy environment that draws others in, and happiness even in brief doses, releases serotonin, a hormone that contributes to the feeling of well-being. Smiling also has health benefits. A study from the University of Kansas found that cracking a smile, even when you don't feel like it, reduces the intensity of the body's stress response, regardless of whether a person actually feels happy. 
When we smile, we convey the idea that we are positive and secure, that we are a positive and secure person, while a frown conveys just the opposite. So your assignment for this coming week is to try and incorporate these seven habits of an optimistic person into your life and to greet everyone you meet with a friendly smile. You know, it takes 42 muscles to frown. It only takes four to slap somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Abraham Lincoln was a well-known depressive. He was depressed all the time, usually. And in certain, well, this is before the war. Oh, <laughs> okay. wow. Okay. You know, nice. They had to heap the Civil War on top of him. But he actually believed that his fight with depression through his early life until he got to be president and his, able, his ability really to control it with his humor, which is well-known, um, uh, allowed him to deal with the Civil War. He was, he, you know, he was able to handle that because he had trained himself. There's this great story about him when he was dating Mary Tide. She was a plantation owner in Kentucky, or she wasn't, but her family was. And he went, and they were dating or something, and he went there and he stayed there for a month in this opulence. But he gets on a train come going back to Springfield, and he's depressed. So he's sitting in the back, he's sitting in the back of the train, all depressed. And he sees up in the front of the car, there are a group of Negro slaves who have been somewhere and are returning to their slavery. And they are laughing and joking and having a great time up there as if they're, and they're happy. He's going, what in the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> you know, I, said, I should be, you know. So, yeah, that, the Abraham Lincoln is probably my hero, and uh, he, he dealt with a lot of demons, yes, he did. Thank you, Dane. You know your history. Well, we you know, some of it, a little bit. I, there's this much, I know this. And thank you for sharing. I found that sometimes uh, even if I feel depressed or I feel down or whatever, if I make myself act in a way uh, that would make was happy or smile, and it's funny you use the word crack a smile, it gives me the idea of like a stone that you're trying to chisel something into because when you, when you feel down, that's what it feels like. Um, but I found that if I act in happy ways, eventually my feelings will follow my actions and then I will feel better. So in one sense, it's like, oh, you're faking it, but fake it till you make it. Or, uh, and it does, it does work. Yeah. Sounds good to me. That's a, that's a good one. I just want to make the point, I was a little bit depressed down this morning and uh, I came here and I feel so much better. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh gosh, yes. That's so wonderful. Amazing. That's good. Yeah. See, we're good for one another after all. Yes, yeah. we do. Nick, you had your hand up. Nikki, did you want to say something? Um, how far back do I want to go? All right. Uh, about oh, two weeks ago, I'm sure everybody knows out of epilepsy. It's very controlled had a breakthrough and I was home alone and it was terrifying when I woke up in the hallway and didn't know how I'd gotten there. And it messes up your brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. And I just sunk down. I sunk really down. And I enjoyed it, apparently, more than pulling myself out. And I just wallowed. Um, I have a degree in psychology, ironically enough, <laughs> it didn't take. But um, there's a, a theory, it's called reality, reality therapy, control theory, I forget, it's been a long time. But the word depression or depressed, if you change that in your mind to an active verb, depressing, and you can say, I am depressing, it gives you responsibility 
that you're putting that there, oh, and we do the count your blessings. We do, but if it if it doesn't if it's not working, you fake it till you make it because physical activity, a physical smile, kickstarts those hormones. Oh, wow. And when you are depressing, you want to just curl up and wallow, yeah. you know, and and just self soothe. <clears throat> yeah. But if you change that, and obviously that doesn't work. Where's <laughs> I go with this? You you can't control your chemicals, but you can you can nudge them You're in the right direction. <laughs> and it is a chemical. It, many times it is a chemical thing that feeds off itself. So you got to be aware of that. Put your foot down and go. Whoops. Let's you know. Let's go make a cake for somebody, or let's jump around in the living room and dance wildly for no reason. Or you just got to admit that you're wrong. Admit that you've been weak, and once you do that, once I do that, I'm like, oh, I, I don't want to. I choose not to. <laughs> not to go there. It's just the admission mm -hmm. of I have. I've chosen to, to let myself sink. I like what you said about admitting that you were wrong, because That's if <laughs> if a person admits they're wrong, they don't have to spend energy defending themselves. Mm -hmm. you know? oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. David? If you could boil down the definition of humans to one word, it probably would be consciousness. Oh. And if you study philosophy pretty deep, you would probably learn that we came here, was created from consciousness. And so we are like kind. And I really think, now this is just an opinion, that our consciousness, our little consciousness we live in, communicate with this great consciousness that created us and is out there. Mm -hmm. And so when we think positive, we are thinking in that consciousness way. And light attracts. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you think positive, good things happen because you're drawing good things to you. Now we don't really realize it. We don't see, well, uh, the first step is happening. What's the next step type thing? You just sort of on faith, you just draw proper consciousness to you. So that's my two cents. That's good. That's good. Anybody else? I want to express gratitude for this church service for hosting this today, this idea, this topic, because uh, I live in two schools of thoughts, the, the consciousness, metaphysical, but then my other side of the family, who's into astrology, has always told me that I'm a Capricorn, and Capricorns are always depressed and negative. <laughs> you would not believe that. But for whatever reason, Capricorns are supposed yeah. to be depressed <coughs> and negative yes. and don't smile a lot, and they right. take professions where they don't. And so everything you're saying, it's like, well, I have a lot going against me, and I have to kind of, you know, so I really appreciate this. What is your birth month? I forget. What, what I was born on the 7th of January. So it's January, people. Mm -hmm. that are, okay. Does that make Jesus a Yes, does that. Just, just, just <laughs> the <laughs> astro astrological study told me that. And it might be a bias against people that are, you know, somebody else said, well, some people just, somebody said, some people are just depressed all the time. Here, some people are never depressed. And it might be astrological. Go ahead, go ahead Barbara. Does, does that, that have, that that have also something, something to do with, with, like the, the weather and the, the, the energy that is within the universe during the winter months. I know when I was in Oregon, I felt like I was on a pity party the entire time. Not because I was isolated from like my family or it was because the, the southern sun does not shine as brightly there as it does <laughs> sure. here. It doesn't. And that I, I fought it for 13 years mm -hmm. out there because, and Roger did not understand it because he's a native of that area. Mm -hmm. But when he came south and we have this glorious sun, even in the winter, he says, I understand, I mean, he is understanding more of who I, who he's married to, <laughs> from well, like what we had the two Sundays ago, yes. you know, the the Caney revival and all like that, mm -hmm. and our southern sunshine. 
Yes. The suicide because I think that that affects us a great deal. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think we get such positive energy from our congregation yeah. each week. Dean, did you? Well, I gave that talk about Christmas, about the, summer, the winter solstice, mm-hmm. yes. and the reason for humans need a life this festival of light at that darkest time of the year. Mm-hmm. And it's actually, it, it has a lot to do with a lack of vitamin D and melatonin. Oh, no oh sun so out. it's chemical and again. It, we mm-hmm. just yeah. kind of yeah. get depressed mm-hmm. and feel hopeless because of the, especially in the north, in the Germanic world of, of ancient times with the snow and the, everything's gray. Second thing, there's a great book by the guy that wrote The Righteous Mind. And a lot of people know that I, that's my favorite book. <laughs> but, you know, I gave a two-week <laughs> endless <laughs> talk well, about that good. early in my, you know, when I joined the church by a guy named Jonathan Haidt, who's a, a great psychologist. But before The Righteous Mind, he wrote a book called The Happiness Hypothesis. The happy what? The happiness, happiness Hypothesis. 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 And it is, it, uh, Molly actually gave a talk about this several years ago, a, a short talk about it. But he, his idea is that people are born with a certain nature. And some people have won what he calls the cortical lottery, where they have basically a contented, kind of happy disposition. And then other people, unfortunately, are, have to shoulder this, this more depressive type. <coughs> and they're born with that in their nature. And, both of them can 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 do everything they can to be either happy or sad or whatever, but eventually they're going to kind of return to their to their basic nature. And he doesn't believe that happiness is anything that really lasts forever. You cannot really have happiness every single minute of the day or the night. That you have happy periods. If you're a contented person, you will eventually go back to your normal. If you're, you know, if you don't have that, unfortunately, unfortunately, you don't have that kind of a nature, you know, you can win $10 million and have everything in the world, and you can go up, be happy for a long time, but eventually you're going to start sliding back. So those kind of people really have to work at that and understand that, and then they can kind of overcome it. It's a great book called The Happiness Hypothesis. Thank you, good. Since astrology was mentioned, Earth also has its own astrology. And in 1912, we left Pisces and ended Aquarius. And we will be in Aquarius for roughly 2,100 years. There's the song. So if you think things are speeding up, are moving faster and changing, you ain't seen nothing yet. (laughs) Just fasten your seatbelt. Oh, wow. (laughs) Fun fact for this winter dreary day, there is a supplement that is found in green tea called L-theanine that helps you create that serotonin in your brain. Green tea for everyone. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you can get a small dose from it, but it, you can act, they actually sell it in a supplement that you can take. And my my boyfriend has very severe anxiety, and he swears by it. What's he it takes called? it every day. It's called L-theanine. L dash theanine. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. And it's in green tea. <laughs> yeah, green tea. they extract it from green tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Anybody else? I think that's in a pill. Thank you. Chewable. It tastes like sweet tart. Yeah, but. <laughs> I, I think green tea and vitamin C uh-huh. are the two most important you know, mm-hmm. chemicals or whatever you want to call them that we mm-hmm. can. Vitamin okay. C is water soluble, mm-hmm. so yes. your body doesn't store it, mm-hmm. and it can only absorb 500 milligrams every 12 hours. So don't take the 5,000. <laughs> you're just going to go through yeah. you. Yeah. Well, I grew up in Florida, which is known as the Sunshine State. They they say that for a reason. Uh, cabin fever gets me every winter. I hate the winters up here. <laughs> yeah. uh, in Florida, you have four or five days of bad weather, but then it's back to the sunshine. Uh, if you can find yourself a tanning booth or a uh, ultraviolet light that you can really? do just on your face, just on your face alone, five minutes of that a day is worth an hour of feel good. I didn't know that. Yeah, so you might want to try that. Thanks, Randy. You're welcome. Anybody else? We have time for one more.
<laughs> okay. If you'll turn in your...